Elizabeth Windsor first visited Zimbabwe in 1947, known then as Southern Rhodesia. At the time, she was known as Princess Elizabeth as her father, King George VI, was the reigning monarch. In 1953, the Queen Mother laid the foundation stone for the University of Rhodesia and Nyasaland, the first university in the country. The oldest town in the country, now called Mashingo, formerly Fort Victoria and the world's biggest waterfall, Victoria Falls, were named after Queen Elizabeth's great-grandmother, Queen Victoria. Many other places and landmarks in Zimbabwe bear the name of the late monarch, including the prestigious Queen Elizabeth High School, an all-girls school in the capital Harare, Queen's Sports Club, a cricket stadium in the city of Bulawayo, the home of test cricket in Zimbabwe, the Queen Elizabeth Hotel, which is the oldest hotel in the capital, and Princess Elizabeth Island on the mighty Zambezi River. The River Island was named after Elizabeth Windsor during her visit in 1947 when she toured Victoria Falls with her parents, King George VI and the Queen Mother Elizabeth. Until 2017, Zimbabwe's military headquarters was known as KG6 after Queen Elizabeth's father, King George VI. King George Road in the Avondale suburb of Harare was also named after Queen Elizabeth's father. In 1965, the white supremacist Rhodesian colonial government issued a unilateral declaration of independence from Britain, an event known as UDI. The rogue regime in Rhodesia initially professed continued loyalty to Queen Elizabeth. The independence declaration clarified that they were only breaking from the British government and affirmed loyalty to Queen Elizabeth, viewing her as the separate Rhodesian monarch as part of a so-called loyal rebellion. All Rhodesian oaths continued to be taken to her and the Declaration of Independence ended with the phrase, God save the Queen. Her Majesty's government in Westminster rejected the UDI it passed the Southern Rhodesia Act of 1965, which de jure affirmed British control and granted Queen Elizabeth II the power to act in the colony. The Queen then issued an order in the Council to suspend the Constitution and sacked the Rhodesian Front Government. These were ignored in Rhodesia and Prime Minister Ian Smith claimed it was the act of the British government and not of the Queen. The Rhodesians also ceased to recognize the governor of Southern Rhodesia, Sir Humphrey Gibbs, as the representative of the Queen and asked him to move out of Government House in Salisbury, which Gibbs refused to do. Smith then asked Queen Elizabeth to appoint a Governor General of Rhodesia to act on her behalf but she refused as she did not recognize the title and treated the request as if it had come from an ordinary citizen as Smith was no longer recognized as prime minister. At the behest of the British government, economic sanctions against Rhodesia were imposed by the United Nations Security Council. Loyalty to the crown was abandoned in 1970 when white Rhodesians voted in a referendum to declare a republic. After a brutal war for independence throughout the 1970s, the colonial regime of Rhodesia was defeated and the country agreed to temporarily return to colonial status, under which free elections were to be held with universal suffrage pending independence. Queen Elizabeth II resumed monarchical duties over the colony through her role as Queen of the United Kingdom and appointed Lord Soames as her representative as Governor of Southern Rhodesia 
until its independence as Zimbabwe on the 18th of April 1980. At the official Independence Day ceremony in April 1980, the Queen sent her eldest son, Charles, then Prince of Wales, as her representative. The climax of the independence celebrations was the handing over of the legal documents which disengaged Britain as colonial rulers to the new ceremonial president, Kanan Banana. It is my very great privilege to hand to you these constitutional instruments, the symbol of your independence. I do so with the best wishes of all the people of Britain for the future peace and prosperity of your country. The newly independent nation became a member of the Commonwealth. Zimbabwe's first president, Robert Mugabe, enjoyed good relations with the monarchy. Queen Elizabeth visited the country again in 1991, and Mugabe was awarded an honorary knighthood in 1994 in recognition for the developments that Zimbabwe had made and for promoting reconciliation with the white minority. However, relations turned sour after the Zimbabwe government embarked on controversial and often violent land reforms at the turn of the millennium. The Zimbabwe government resorted to this after Britain reneged on promises made regarding land reform during negotiations for independence. Zimbabwe was suspended from the Commonwealth in 2002 over concerns about democracy after a disputed presidential election won by Robert Mugabe. In 2003, the Mugabe-led government withdrew Zimbabwe from the Commonwealth and Zimbabwe remains a non-member to this day. Mugabe was stripped of his knighthood in June 2008 over alleged human rights abuses after another disputed election and a violent runoff in 2008. Well, it was a violent, sadist attack on defenseless people. Yeah, I'm gonna go. Okay, all right. We don't recognize this illegitimate regime of Robert Mugabe. We're going to continue to defy them. We don't recognize Posa. We don't recognize Robert Mugabe. The criminals. Despite the marked diplomatic differences, Queen Elizabeth never publicly spoke against Mugabe. And Mugabe himself, who had a sharp tongue and enjoyed berating his opponents, avoided chastising Queen Elizabeth. 